Welcome, my name is D2, and with me is Kaldi, and we're excited to bring you the English cast of this. Those are not us on the screen. Also, I want to remind you that you can catch the VODs of these if you're missing some of the matches at uh, youtube.com slash D2HS. That is my channel. And uh, next we have a very nice match for you guys. Dog versus Tice, two of the best players in the world, and uh, really cool decks that they have, or classes that they have in this situation as well, because of that rule where you had to play all land classes. Let's take a look at those decks right now. Dog bringing a warrior. It looks like it's going to be a patron warrior there, uh, followed by, uh, looks like a dragon priest, and then a uh, face hunter there. So what do you think about this lineup from Dog? I think it's really strong. It seems to be anti-aggro, then with the hunter added in. Uh, the cards that stick out to me would be uh, the Sylvanas. People generally go either Chillwing, uh, Dr. Boom or Sylvanas. Sylvanas is probably the least common of the three. Uh, now, but now we have Tysha up here from Gamers 2, who just demolished his opponent last turn. Uh, he is running the uh, face hunter as well. People seem to be oh. really going strong on the face hunter, but he has at least yeah, high some and hybrid well, versions. Yeah, yeah so it's kind of like a hybrid face. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and and what used to be the oil rogue without the raptor, and uh, then full on Max Yaman. Now there is the Trog and there is the ancestral. So some options. He has a totem golem now. We're talking about the difference between the Mac version and the non-Mac version, and basically the difference is supposed to be that the Mac version has no bad starts, but the non-Mac version has no bad top decks. And I have to see how that goes. I pre personally prefer the Mac version that Tyus is running. This would be an interesting scenario. I'm kind of having to give the edge to Dog because he has a more anti-aggro lineup. Because even Face Hunter is anti-aggro, as crazy as that is, because you have two Unleash the Hounds and you have two Explosion Traps. So I feel like the Face Hunter is going to be favored against, for example, the Mech Shaman. I feel like the Face Hunter is going to be favored against the Hybrid Hunter. So I think Dog is favored here in this, this match, slightly. Right, and it is a big deal that they line up their decks correctly against the decks of their opponent, considering they do have to play all nine classes, if you're unaware of this, guys. So, yeah, very interesting match that we have going forward today with that, uh, with the two anti-aggro decks that Dog has going against two of the aggro decks from Tice here. Though, uh, I guess Hybrid Hunter can make things happen in you know the mid to somewhat late game, but it uh, looks like we're getting started already here with the Face Hunter versus Tice's Oil Rogue. And one thing to uh, Matt to uh, talk about here is that I looked at Tice's deck. There's no heal bot in this. So no heal bot obviously being a big deal as far as, you know, not being able to recover in this situation from, from Tice. I believe he only has the Earth and Ring Forest here. So Tice is going to be on full on race mode in this matchup. This is a dangerous scenario though, because Tyus might even be a bit scared of this Hunter deck and may even be tempted to go for something like the uh, Edwin, but Hunter is uh, one of the weaker decks to go, like, go for a big Edwin, because there's the Owl, even double Owl often, there's the Hunter's Mark, so you really have to be a bit careful when you're going for that. Because uh, something like Soup, for example, wouldn't have an answer to a big Edwin generally, but the Hunter does have some answers, and we even see the Owl in in, uh, ties, in in Dog's hand. I think just backstab and a 4 for Edwin is probably the right call here, but it's a tough call. You definitely want to attack, though, first with the Dagger if you do decide to go for the Edwin before dropping the Edwin. Right, just to make sure that it is... Uh... If there is an explosive trap that you get rid of it right away. And if it is that freezing trap, then you could be in a bit of trouble making a big Edwin right here. But uh, Tice in a bit of a quandary. Obviously, if he wants to make a huge Edwin, he needs to go for that prep and deadly poison. But uh, could be all in vain if this ends up being freezing trap like we suspect it might. Yeah, he doesn't even have a good call to make this uh, big Edwin because he doesn't know what type of hunter this is. This could be... This is going to be disastrous for Tyson. Right. here. He, he loses out on the... <laughs> get, gets his uh, Edwin silenced. There's even no need to silence right now. Maybe the only... The, the main reason he silenced it right now is because there could be a South Sea. Yeah, it could be South charged sea. into the... Uh, yeah, into South the Sea trap. could be a big deal. Um, wait, so they both ran Hunter. Who was the one with the hybrid? I think Tice was the hybrid Hunter, right? And Tice was... is the hybrid, Dog is the face Hunter, yeah. So this could be explosive trap, potentially? Yeah. Uh, it absolutely, probably is exploded. That's it's, but so he may even not be thinking about the freezing trap. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. Actually, kind of the uh, kind of the uh, hunter creep, but I don't th think so. Okay, so he's not playing around fan. It's yeah. all right. I mean, he has a follow up with the uh, wolf fighter or the bow. It's not too bad. I wish it doesn't do much for ties here. What about just checking by attacking the hunter creeper? Yeah, it could be. Look, looks like uh, Tice is going to check what this is. Realizes that it's either now going to be uh, bear uh, explosive or snipe. No dart trap yet, unfortunately for us, I guess, in this situation. But yeah, going back to what you were saying earlier, Tice immediately kind of uh, guessing that it's going to be the face hunter because against a hybrid hunter, I feel like he has a bit of a chance, you know, potentially using those saps in the later game uh, to deal with things like high main. But. Um, yeah, definitely went all in the turn before and might get punished in this situation. He is falling behind in damage, though he does have a minion that survives that explosive trap. So, uh, not completely over, but definitely ties on the back foot in this situation against a really bad matchup. I mean, typically, I mean, the Rogue doesn't do too poorly against the Face Hunter, but that's uh, con taking into account that they have Heblot in their deck and Tice does not. Yeah, it's, it's generally about 60 40 favor for the Hunter. It depends on the start. Flurry and and uh, and uh, and the fan are the important cards, but this is not over by any chance. I mean, Tyson has a flurry, and he realizes he needs a decent flurry to make this happen. Uh, but yeah, I don't think attacking here is the right call. Anyways. Yeah, maybe he was thinking that he needed to get some sort of Tinker's flurry in order to win the game here. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that might be the situation. But you know, any sort of flurry would be good here, uh, especially with the Zerdrick on the board. It could be worth four damage. So uh, I like him holding onto it. Dog does goes for the silence onto this pile of shredder, so that it's easier to clean up. And uh, against the rogue, typically you're not going to see more than two minions onto the field at the same time. So it's just going to pull the trigger on this unleash the hounds and deal even more damage to the face. And uh, Tice under a lot of trouble. The only he only has three healing in this entire deck. Uh, keep in mind, guys. He does have a board clear though, and he can go for the SI on top of that. So I think um, it's it's not over yet, is what I want to say. Mm -hmm. It's not looking perfect for for Tice. I mean, because Dog does have the Wolf Rider uh, cards like Wolf Rider, cards like Bow, cards like uh, Kill Command. That's those are the types. That Tice can't really deal with. He could deal with something like a mad scientist or, or a, a lepronome or a arson squire, but this is going to be tougher for him. He's just in full on race mode now, so every damage to face will matter. Right. So, for in Dog's position here, do you potentially trade because you're worried about a heal bot, or do you just go completely face here? It looks like he is going to go face. I, he has to set up a lethal here, yeah. Um, he's able to deal, what is it? Four eight damage next turn, so he just sets up for lethal. Tice will need the heal bot. He gets the Earthen Ring though. That's perfect. That's the only <laughs> card in his deck that heals himself, and the only thing that gets in the way. And as well, I don't believe he runs Sludge Belcher either. I, I had a quick glance at the deck, and I don't believe he's running that either. So this is the only thing that will help him against this, and uh, maybe even use the sap because we know that. Uh, I mean, just basically taking three mana away from your opponent is really valuable right here. I know that Dog wouldn't like to see this. Especially because he has two wolf riders anyway. You yeah, no question about that. I mean, but this is looking really rough for Tice. He figured, okay, I'll probably beat the the priest, and if it's a patron, it will be close. So that's what I'm gonna go for. But Tice is setting up wow. for lethal next turn here, and I mean, Dog doesn't have lethal. Wow, this is absolutely insane. Tice can actually win this game. Goes for the hero power, gambling that he has something to proc this sat or this eviscerate next turn, uh, and most likely he will be able to, no matter what it is. And is so how much? Damage? Nine. It's nine damage. Wow. It's not enough. Oof. <laughs> so yeah, three from the glaive zuka, four from the uh, arcane golem, and then another two from the hero power. One mana off lethal, I believe. No, that's not true. Because, no, one mana. One, one, one damage of lethal. One damage, yeah. Just, uh, one damage of lethal, uh, obviously. Um, Not one mana of lethal, unfortunately. That's kind of uh, the weird way that his hand is set up. But gonna have to go for trades here because uh, I. Well, he's not done on board. So I, maybe he just goes for it and doesn't trade at all? Yeah, it's a tough call. I actually think Wolf Fighter and Sarkin, uh, Asher Drake, and Hero Power is the right call because he had has lethal anyway. Mm. He can't beat a heal bot anyhow. So why not just. Go for the the scenario that he doesn't have it now. I can only. Yeah, Tyus has what seven on board, so 
He needs, how many costs he needs that have more much? damage. That's not going to be it because without the spell oh. damage, the the risk rate is only going to be four, even if he backs up his own creature. So now he is one damage off lethal. And after this cr this crazy game, it might end up being Dog's victory after all. Your dog is gonna take this, but this this crazy, crazy top deck from ties with the other ring fast here almost turned things around. Now, dog doesn't care if he shows ties this hunter card or that hunter card because he is already locked the hunter out here because this is conquest. So, dog taking a 1 0 lead. We're talking about him having a slight edge in the lineup as well. So, things looking good for dog. All right, looks like we're having some production issues on the Chinese side as uh, our Chinese, our three Chinese casters are floating in midair. There we go. All right, so Dog does take the first game, does go up one game to zero in a very important game, able to get that hunter out of the way. Could run into some trouble later on uh, in the day, but uh, actually good choice by Dog overall to bring out that hunter, realizing that uh, it was a reasonable matchup against all the decks that Tice was bringing at this juncture. So. Uh, good on him to get that win right off the bat and secure himself a lead. It'll be now on Tithe to see if he can uh, steal some wind with his aggressive decks against Dog's more controlly decks. Yeah, um, so it's looking good for the Rogue, for Tithe. Now it only has, it has two good matchups, so why not go ahead and take that win and, and scout a bit out what you're facing, see if this is going to be a Patron or Control Warrior. I mean, it's most likely Patron from Dog, but Tyson has to figure that out, but it's always nice to know. And it's most likely going to be Dragon Priest from Dog, but it's nice to know that it's definitely not Control Priest, because uh, it just gives him more information. Now, I mean, Tyson will need to win with his uh, Hybrid Hunter, and that's almost impossible against the Dragon Priest. And hmm. it's possible with the Patron, but I would give the Patron an edge. Now we right. talk about the last deck. Do you remember what the last deck with Tais was here? Shaman. Uh, Shaman, yeah. Okay, so the Shaman has a chance against the Warrior, but there's almost no chance against the Dragon Priest. So I think what has to happen here is that the Dragon Priest is probably going to get a win from Dog. The Rogue is probably going to get a win with Tais. Oh, we're already into the game. Huh. But what Tais needs to do is beat the patron twice. Both matchups, I think it's about even for the Shaman and I think the Hunter is slightly unfavored. So Thais will need to win a 50% matchup and what I would probably say a 40% matchup to have a chance. But this is the first step at least. Thais will need to win this game. Yeah, this is one of the more even matchups that we're going to see today. It's going to be an uphill battle for the Hunter or Shaman to pick up a win, but uh, this one can go either way. Uh, typically, Rogue is favored against Priest, but um, with all the high health minions that the uh, the Dragon Priest is able of throwing out there, it can be a struggle for uh, Rogue to deal with them all. And in case you guys were wondering, we did have a turn 1 Twilight Whelp into a turn 2 uh, into uh, Hero Power by Tice. Oh, sorry, a pass by Tice, then a Wormer's Agent, and then a Hero Power by Tice, and then on turn 3, Dog electing not to go for the uh, Dorshire Cleric, fearing something like a Blade Flurry to clear it out. And then finally, Dog unable to pick up a Dragon here, so just going to play out that lonely Zombie Chow, uh, no Dorshire Cleric once more, and uh, electing not to play the 2-6 uh, Twilight Guardian. Yeah, generally, Rogue excels against suit type of decks, but it is strongest against one particular true style deck, and that is the Dragon Priest. And the reasons behind that is uh, Dragon Priest does not have any protections against Blade Flurry. And when I talk about protections against Blade Flurry, that would be something uh, like an egg, for example, that the Sioux has, or a Lothep. And the Dragon Priest just isn't running either of them. So in the late game, there will be a Flurry, and it will be devastating. Another thing is Sap against Dragon Priest is really, really strong. Whereas against Sue, it's not as strong. There's no uh, chill mode. There's no Isherus to sap generally. But we do see that we do know Dog is running Sylvanas as his 6 to 7 drop. So that's particularly weak against Rogue because it can just be sapped. Right, definitely a point of weakness in that situation. But uh, what do we go for here as Tyus? One interesting thing to keep in mind is that he does have that Dr. Boom. I imagine he replaced the heal bot with a Dr. Boom so that it has a better matchup against some other control decks. Obviously, uh, not favoring or not looking at the, uh, you know, 
the aggro matchups quite as much here. And uh, what is the play here? Looks like he's actually going to trade into this Blackwing Corruptor. I think if I'm dog, I'm actually happy about that outcome. Yeah, this isn't pretty. Uh, the Blackwing Corruptor got two for one, and now this is looking doable even for Ty's. Uh, for for dog, I mean, uh, he's getting he's getting some minor victories here, which is what he needs to take this take this game. But I mean, Ty's at least has Doctor Boom, and there's no good answer here for dog. Yeah, definitely. Light bomb, light bomb, or, or death would be needed, and he has neither. Yeah, it looks like Tice doesn't want to take that risk uh, about getting shut up by something like a, a Shadow or Death, followed by maybe a Twilight Guardian. So not gonna commit to that. Instead, probably going to see a. Uh, hmm, we might. Yeah, it's going to. Huh? Just kidding. Okay, just going to be a, a dagger up and deadly poison. I was looking at that Edwin. He could have maybe played uh, a four four Edwin in that situation, or he could have played you know six six Edwin just to bait out the shadow or death before he plays a doctor boom. But instead, opts to clear the board in this situation. And uh, dog looking like he's going to play. I mean, he's already played the twilight guardian, but. Uh, Interesting decision of whether or not he goes with the Wormus Agent as well. Obviously not a very good trade on board with that uh, Twilight, or excuse me, the Azure Drake. But, uh, just the, reason of... behind, Sorry, the reason behind going for the uh, going for the Fat of Knives and the Deadly Poison there is Ty's wanted to play around Light Bomb. He figures, okay, if I go for Dr. Boom into this and I have an Azure Drake also, or also vulnerable, a Light Bomb will put me way behind. But now he has a Shaft to follow up. And we even see here the light bomb being mentioned on the Chinese stream. So no light bomb in hand for Doc. This is looking rough. He top decks the deadly the shadow with death here. How is this possible? Who is this guy? <laughs> Well, that's really important, obviously, for him to get rid of that, but he's still not out of the woods yet. Uh, he's still behind on board, no matter what he does here. Obviously, playing the Twilight Guardian would die to the board that Tice has at the moment. And Tice has a way to refill his hand, so after everything that's gone on this game, I feel like Tice still has the upper hand uh, in this situation. Oh, no question, no question. There is the back of the title looking for in terms of the prep sprint. Could even go for a, a massive at win here. We might be looking at a 10 10 at win potentially. Yeah, absolutely. Especially after seeing, you know, the, the Shadow Word Death being top decked there just the previous turn. And you probably think that a Light Bomb would have been used there, even though, you know, Shadow Word Death, that might be one of the only times you get to use Shadow Word Death, other than something like a Lotheb uh, further on in a game. So, But I think that Tice probably feels like there's no Light Bomb in the hand of Dog right now and can go for a huge Edwin at this moment. Yeah, it's pretty safe to say that Dog would play the light bomb over death. Dog is such a strong player that you don't expect him to make mistakes. But now, what is he going to go for? Coin? Okay. It's looking like it's going to be a 6-6. Six, six. Is it? He could just drop like the prep for for nothing, I suppose. <laughs> he, could have, he could have prepped the oil, gone for a sound loss and made it a 10-10. Right. I think that would have been probably... A stronger play. I don't know what Tice is going for here. This is... Ugh. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm he surprised. does have the ability to make a 6-6 six, six next turn, and by healing up this Azure Drake, he's able to keep it out of Holy Nova range, so that could be something as well. Keeps it out of spell damage Holy Nova range as well, uh, if he's concerned about that. But Dog maybe he is just, Sorry? Maybe he's just baiting out the second death. Wants to check, okay, he doesn't have Light Bomb, he's used one death, does he have the second death? He would use it now if he had it, so if he doesn't have it, I'm going to make a huge Edwin. Maybe that's his, that's his idea here. Yeah, it could be the case. And he can actually make, wow, even with a second prep, he can make an absolutely massive Edwin. Uh, he can uh, prep, sprint, as well as use the Blood Mace Talons before he even plays the Edwin. So just that sequence right there makes an 8-8 eight -eight Ed Edwin, and then he can backstab plus prep eviscerate. Are we looking at a 12-12? Uh, how big is this Edwin? 14-14? Something like that? You could, yeah, Talnos prep flurry for Fal six Talos. steps. No, I yeah, think for six in, yeah, I think that would be... It looks like he's just going to backstab just for the, the hell of it. Um, huh. All right, just going to go he with values this. He the, the prep or backstab, I guess, at this point. Oh, does he just have lethal? Oh, okay, it's never mind. <laughs> All right, I guess, I guess we were looking at the Edwin the entire time. Uh, sorry to those of you in chat who uh, caught 
the lethal there. You are the real pros here. But uh, congratulations to Tyus realizing, okay, I don't need to make a super 14-14 at win if I can just win the game. Congratulations to him taking out that victory. And now we are tied one game to one. And uh, this ma this series is starting to heat up, but I still fear for Tyus. He has two aggressive decks versus two very good decks at controlling the board. Yeah, so Tyus got the uh, the mandatory win here. Out, out of the way, he needed to win, he needed to beat the Priest, and the Priest almost has a free win now against both of Tyson's decks, so we might even be seeing that next next game up here, uh, but it will be important how the Patron for Dog does, I think he is more likely to take a win against the uh, against the Shaman and the Hunter, but there's, there's possibilities in both of those matchups, so this match is not over by any means, but I would give the dog a slight advantage here, going to game number three. Yeah, absolutely. I think dog has the better lineup in this situation, despite how well Tyus is capable of playing. Going to be in Hup Hill battle <clears throat> with these aggressive decks here. Priest, obviously, uh, from Dog, very good at controlling the board with those early minions like the Twilight Whelp and the Wormus Agent, uh, but not a whole lot as far as a board clear other than that Light Bomb and potentially the Holy Nova. We are going to see that matchup right now, going to be the Shaman versus the Priest, and we'll see if Tyus can eke out a victory or if Dog can control this game. So this is almost mandatory here. Tyus will have to get a crazy start here to have any chance in this game. He is... 1-1, one, one, it's it's even, but it still doesn't really cover because there's four, at least four, probably six one-drops here for Dog. He only has one of them, but what is he going to go for? He goes for the Mac Warper, and yeah, he trades to avoid the Valens, and that's absolutely correct. Yeah, very heads up here by Tys, and uh, going for the trade here, wants to get... Uh, wants to be efficient here with his mana rather than using either that Rock Biter or the Lightning Bolt. And this turn he can start pressuring his opponent with the Power Mace. However, unable to get a minion to uh, pressure that way. Yeah, I mean, this is the sort of scenario that Tys needs to get rolling. No two drop in Dog's hand. He has a four drop, even two of them. Dar Dragon King Sorceress is not common. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Dragon Gun Sorcerer is a nice card just because it's a threat that you kind of have to kill because it can get absolutely huge using either the Valence Chosen or the Powered Shield. And it's able to, you know, buff up this Twilight Guardian. If he, even if he hadn't drawn that Azure Drake, it would have been a possibility there. So that's pretty much the reason why. Uh, Ty is able to clear this out pretty easily, however. Going to make a 4-5 Mech Warper, which is extremely hard to deal with, and able to fill out his career with the Totem and the Annoyatron. So Dog going to be on the back foot here. And this is about as good as you can and hope for as Tice. I think so. Yeah. Uh, now we talked about the Ty uh, about Tice is uh, aggro shaman. It having basically always a good start, and that's what we've been seeing now. But it isn't as solid in the late game as I guess the, uh, the non mech version because it does have weak top decks like the Trog, for example. Uh, but yeah. On the last turn, though, and talk about the weakness of this deck. That's the hero power doesn't synergize with the strategy. This spell damage totem is going to be of little value. And f think if this was actually a uh, a hunter hero power, for example, or a paladin hero power, even you could get a mini, you know, you could get a two damage to the face. How how much stronger would that be? And this is what I'm excited to see uh, Finlay Merkleton come out today for that crazy uh, switch, where you could switch this to a hero power of the hunter and get that value rolling. This kind of feels like, um, in my opinion, how the uh, aggro warrior feels sometimes when you armor up while you're going face. Right. But uh, in this situation, Ty's still in a good spot despite that weak hero power. And does that mean lethal in this situation? He has three from the weapon. It's going to buff up one of these mechs so that he has... Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that's going to be lethal. Tice able to steal this game right in her dog's nose on turn 6. Wow, that's actually pretty crazy and huge for the outcome of this overall match. A big upset here, no question about that. I mean, 
This was a mandatory victory here for Dog. He only got one one drop out of the six that he does have, and he got no two drops. He only has two two drops to be fair, but you know, out of the eight important uh, early game cards, he only got one of them. He didn't get the AOE he needed as well. He just had a very middle of the way removal uh, mid range minions, and that's just not what you need against this type of aggro. So everything going wrong for Dog here, and this series just blew wide open. Yeah, definitely. Ty's getting one of his aggressive decks out of the way. That's huge news for him, but he's still not out of the woods. Still has that aggressive hunter, the hybrid hunter, I believe, uh, going against the priest and the warrior. So still going to be an uphill battle to be able to get his hunter through and cleared so that he can get the overall series win. But he has two chances at it, and that's absolutely huge because he was able to get that win with the shaman. We will see how Dog responds and what he thinks is the best matchup against his hunter. Again, every single every single point counts here guys even if dog loses this series in the end he wants to be able to get as many games as possible we saw that loom very large on the very first day when life coach was or had a one and two series record but was still able to advance because of his superior game score or game difference and that's going to be the case here dog apparently deciding that he likes his priest over his warrior in order to beat this hunter here yeah to talk about the uh the question you had, what what's going to be the strongest deck against uh, this type of hunter? Now, Dog doesn't know what type of hunter this is, and against the hybrid hunter, the hard counter is Dragon Priest. We saw Dog's hand, he had a one drop and a two drop. So this is looking almost impossible for Ties to get a win here. I think it's going to come down to the warrior versus hunter, and we see him past turn one. This is not what you want to see. Yeah, uh, passing turn one or passing turn yeah passing turn one as a hunter as you know even though you're playing you know hybrid hunter it's still you're still trying to be aggressive you're still trying to get that fast start and then knock him out with those bigger minions in the end like that Savannah high main but really slow start here for Tice and really no option to defend against this he might have to just go for a lucky Misha here potentially yeah the quick shot on the on the zombie here was another possibility. Uh, it is rough, though. It really is rough. There were there was so some uh, some possibility, I guess, even to just coin out the quick shot on the zombie chair and hope to God that you get a a two drop. I mean, Tyson's probably happy that he didn't go for that because he top tagged an arcane golem. But yeah, um, this is looking almost impossible. Misha would be the one he needs to get out of this, but then he has no follow up except potentially uh, a bow, but if he rolls a Leoch, then he did lose the game right there, so it's a tough call for Tyus. This is, this is the, uh, the kind of game that, that basically separates the good players from the great. Yeah, and he does get the Misha. Oh my goodness, he rolls the Misha, and now Dog with a really hard decision here, whether or not to trade both minions in and just develop his, uh, his uh, further on top of that. But, oh my goodness, wow, that is a huge roll for him. And is Dog just going to... Oh, maybe he's lagging out. Are we having internet issues? Okay, it looks like he's just going to cl uh, clear using both minions into the Misha and then going to just play a Northshire Cleric. Not going to commit to that Twilight Whelp to the board because it can be huge in buffing up something like a Twilight Guardian. Absolutely, or possibly just giving an Unleash the Hounds. He could... Kill command and, and then have an awkward 4 2 on the board Ooh. that can trade into the North Shire. So, well done to him. But does Dog have to pass on turn 4? This is a disaster. His, his pre stores are just falling apart. This is something that can happen. You either don't have the start you need or you just don't have the dragon synergy you need. But, I mean, with the follow ups there, yeah. uh, things. He does have a, a, a perfect 5 drop and a perfect 6 drop to. Follow the seven. This is hybrid hunter as well, so that things like death aren't dead cards. If you're facing face hunter, then shadow with death is almost dead. Mm -hmm. You know, life bomb is weak, even though it's often used. So there are options here. Yeah, definitely. And I think you do have to pass here as dog. I don't think playing a two one is worth not having the battle cry for your black wing corruptor next turn, and it's too much of a risk not to get the the battle cry off, especially because your twilight Wolf can just die to your opponent's hero power. It looks like he did go ahead and pass. Things are getting kind of confusing here. And uh, yeah, it looks like the spectator mode is getting a little bit bugged out. 
and uh, Dog did indeed pass the uh, previous turn and going to just play this uh, Black Moon Corruptor to kill off this um, Abusive Sergeant. We talked about how weak Dog's play was, but I mean, Tice only played an Abusive Sergeant and developed a secret in that situation, so not the best play, not the best situation for Tice either. And uh, after this turn, Dog is still at 30 health and has a Cabal Shadow Priest in hand. Yeah, no question about that. I mean, you do need a blistering start and preferably having the priest pass a few times, which is something that did happen a lot before with the control priest, but this dragon priest is just a Sioux style deck and, and has all the answers. Yeah, so definitely Dog going to be looking to hold on here despite this poor start. Really unfortunate that he drew the Dragonkin Torcer one turn late. Uh, the opposite order would have been absolutely huge getting the Dragonkin Torcer into that Black Ring Corruptor potentially. But uh, still in an okay spot, still has, you know, pit potentially board control, and Tice forced to use the Arcane Golem, realizing that, you know, 6 mana, 7 mana doesn't matter as far as the Cabal Shadow Priest is concerned, and just going to clear the board, that feels really bad. It sure does here, and, and yeah, it, it's a rough scenario. Tice is, you know, going for the long shot, and that's what he needs to do in this type of scenario. Oh wow, Dog committing both dragons to the board, so he won't be able to activate something like a Twilight Guardian in the future. I think starting to realize that his next turn is probably going to be Sylvanas Pass or Cabal Shadow Priest Pass, so going to pull the trigger right here and uh, take a chance. And uh, on top of that, I guess the Twilight Whelp was to uh, proc the Freezing Trap, and uh, definitely Tice confirming that by killing it and forcing the Dragon Contorcer to endure that trap instead. That is true here. I think... In his call, yeah, he does proc the vision trap. That is really, really strong. Sylvanas does challenge this board, but it's not looking as good as it did mm -hmm. early on for Dog. Right, so Dog one mana off being able to just steal this Savannah High main out, or steal it outright. Uh, next turn, he can maybe steal something and then use the Shadow Word Death to steal the High main in that turn. Or he can use, you know, the Shadow Word Pain instead. So Dog's still in a good position despite facing a High main here. And uh, yeah, definitely a really smart play on that last turn that I wasn't able to catch. He was able to get rid of the bow for Tice because he was forced to uh, make sure that the Dragon King Sorcerer was frozen back. That is true here. Um, some minor issues here happening with the Observer client. For those of you who have played a tournament, this is something that does happen. Sadly, the client isn't perfect, and especially on patch day, we have to just be a little bit patient. All right, yeah, so Cal, or excuse me, Tice, uh, so referring to you, uh, so Tice realizing that he needs to put the pressure on, does have a bit of burst in his hand, so yeah, going to go ahead and just put the pressure on, not have to worry about the Sylvanas, just gonna get some damage to the face. Uh, on the other hand, Dog can steal this high main now, because we did re we did see that he had uh, both the Shadow Word Pain and the Cabal Shadow Priest to be able to deal with this Leper Gnome. Uh, interesting to see what he goes for if he's worried about his life total, if he wants to favor using that hero power instead. But uh, I think that's a, probably a pretty good play for him using that Cabal with the uh, steel on the Shadow Word, or on the Savannah High Main. I have to agree with you there, yeah. Something like Light Bomb might be even playable here. I feel like, though, the uh, Sylvanas is, is turning out to be good, but we back here in this, and it looks like Tys has managed to. Uh, Dog has managed to steal this uh, Savannah, probably even with a death on his own Sylvanas. I think that's the most likely scenario. So Tice has probably gone face, and Dog has punished him heavily for that. Tice is going just full on smork here, using the hero power, going face with the unleash. Yeah, realizing that he's strong. never going to win any sort of board control battle. Finally, just going to start attacking the face here. Uh, Dog is going to maybe look for some damage here. How much damage does he have on the board? He has 11, uh, 13. So not going to be able to get lethal here is Dog, no matter what he draws. But instead going to just commit to the board. And are we going to see any trades here is the question. Does pick up the warmest Agent, which is nice for him. And uh, going to be a nice roadblock. But uh, how much face are we going and how much trading are we doing? Uh, what would you do here? Just go face with the rest of this? Yeah, it looks like it's going to maybe, be... Like maybe this. maybe with one of them. I think you have lethal anyway. Right, uh, right, so right. it doesn't matter if you go face the Cabal. You might as well trade there. He gets the important beast synergy, no matter what. But Dog just figures, okay, how do I set up for lethal next turn? Mm. And 
also play as defensively as possible. This is but really unfortunate that we're unable to get a good viewing experience for, for you guys here. Looks like a lot of issues having to deal with uh, two players on the China server playing from outside of China. That's why you saw some of the lag earlier. Um, and this can happen because obviously China has a separate server. That's why when you go to your, your Battle.net client that you can only select either Asia, uh, EU or NA or, or the Americas, excuse me. You cannot select that China server because of the restrictions that the Chinese government has on. Looks like we're getting back into the game. Unfortunately, you're unable to see the end. Uh, Tice unable to get the requisite damage to finish off the game and Dog is able to take it. So that's a tie of the series. Dog able to pick that up. And it's 2-2 going to the final game of Patron Warrior versus the Hybrid Hunter. Absolutely. Here, what we're talking about the deciding game. Patron Warrior, I think, is slightly favored, but it's very close. It will come down to the weapons, it will come down to the executes, it will come down to start of ties. Whirlwind will be critical, but this is not as, as favored as it used to be for Patron Warrior. It used to just be a complete blowout, and, and but now it's different. You don't have the war song, so you can have to rely on, on things like Gromas and, and Dr. Boom, which aren't as strong against Hunter as, as the old combo removal uh, patron. Right, but it still has the patrons to be able to get that combo out, so still a very difficult situation for the Hunter if that does come out, and uh, obviously patron going to be having to be playing uh, very defensively in the early game, whereas the uh, hybrid hunter is going to be trying to finish the game out as quickly as possible. So, going to be looking to get good draws here is Dog to deal with the onslaught from the hybrid hunter and on Tice's end, just trying to get as annoying a board as possible, as much damage as possible, and uh, probably going to face as much as possible and maybe cleaning up some th some minions here and there. But uh, if you ever have to face that patron board, it's likely going to be end of the game. It sure is here, but it, it's tough to get the patron board off now. You know, you don't have as much. Uh, removal as he used to have. You're cutting things f to uh, play this more mid range so it's kind of like mid range versus mid range here. Right, right, exactly. Uh, but yeah, in the end, I mean, we'll, we'll just have to see how the game pans out. Again, for those of you uh, wondering, that is not us on the screen. Uh, we are casting from our respective homes. Uh, thanks again to Celestial for allowing us to cast this in English for you guys. Uh, on the screen there, I'm not sure who the other two casters are, but I know that Magic Wind, who uh, kind of got his fame by winning the China versus Korea series, is on the right there. So he is part of that Chinese casting team. Uh, hopefully we can get this game to you as quickly as possible, and hopefully we don't have any uh, or have fewer production issues coming up in this game. But uh, yeah, just I guess talk about this series so far. It's been absolutely amazing. Two games to two, very top level player plays by both players, and uh, coming down to the wire with his patron warrior versus hunter. But you know, just back and forth the entire time. Uh, Dog able to take the hunter in the beginning, but Ty's coming right back with wins with the rogue and shaman. Finally, Dog taking it with the priest there to even the series all up. Um, who do you, I mean, how do you like this series so far, I guess, is what I'm going to ask you. It's just been fantastic. Both players are playing their heart out. This series is so high level. There's almost nothing to comment on when it comes to their play. It's just been fantastic. It's a pleasure to watch something like this unfold. Dog had a slight edge in the, in the lineups. Every game has gone how we would expect them to go, except the Priest versus Shaman game. Tyus had a better hand and Dog just kind of drew dead, so we're going to game number 5. It's just fantastic to see every single day go to game 5. So, so much excitement that that brings. Even though you're going to a favorite matchup, it's game number 5 and anything can happen. So I think this year just is wide open after that Priest loss to the uh, Agro Shaman. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just to update you guys, we have gone to Game 5 every single series so far, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, Dog winning his first match 3-2 to two versus Braros, and then Tice winning his match 3-2 to two versus Kimmy. The winner of this will be 2-0 and o on the day, which will put them in commanding position to advance to the next day. Uh, I think we've only had... Uh, have we, I think we had one player who was 2-1 and one who did not advance to the finals, but that's been about it. Uh, usually when you go up 2-0, you're in a really good spot. And uh, the person who drops to 1-1, one and one, on the other hand, will be at 500 both in series wins and in game wins. So they're going to have to probably win that last game in order to move on 
after this match, we are going to be seeing Brawl Rose and Kimmy, and both of them will be looking for their first win. So yeah, going to be very interesting to see how this all pans out con uh, concerning all of these players. And uh, will we see a player finally get out of their group who is not an invited player? It's almost it's kind of crazy, right? The uh, Celestial team almost did too good of a job inviting their players because uh, everyone except for J Shot thus far has been able to advance out of their group. Speaking of the invited every players. every uh, in invited player, I guess to mention here, yeah. Sorenzo was the only one to fall, uh, who did end up falling to J Shot, but. To talk about the uh, the uh, the score, we two one has been enough to this point. So the winner of Tog, Dog vs Ties should be through. There is a possibility for a three way tie, um, and for that to happen, the winner here would have to lose his last game. So Dog would either have to lose to Kimmy or Ties would have to lose to Bravos, and then the uh, then either Kimmy or or Bravos would essentially. Uh, um, so, so the, the winner here would have to lose the next game, and the loser here would have to win the next game. That's how that would have to go. Right. And Kimmy and Bravos would also have to have a scenario where the player that faces the winner here wins in that match. So it's very, very unlikely, but it is possible that the person that wins this series here does not go through. All right, so very confusing situation there with all the different uh, situations that could happen. Hopefully it gets cleared up after this particular match, and we're finally going to get into it after all the difficulties that we had. Again, apologies to you guys. Uh, we are doing our best to bring this to you in English, but uh, the production side is going to be on the in the hands of Team Celestial and the, uh, the staff that they have hired. Looks like it's going to be... Uh, like we mentioned, the uh, Hybrid Hunter versus the Patron Warrior, and Dog opening up with two Fiery War Axes going to be very essential for him to shut down the early aggression of Tice. But on, on the flip side, though, this is a really strong hand here for, for Tice. Having a one drop, a two drop, a bow. A bow is the bow is critical here. There's no Taskmaster, that's one of the most important cards here against Hunter. To execute in the late game. Gromas is dead, so there's a lot of potential here. I think. This is looking very even. Both players having decent hands. I think Dog's hand is, is about average, versus Tyson's hand is, is, is slightly above average, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Um, Dog with an interesting decision here. He can either coin into the Acolyte, coin into the Frothing Berserker, or just use that Fiery War X. Uh, another thing to consider also is that Inner Rage that could you know, mitigate a lot of the damage coming forth from Tyson uh, from that Worgen Infiltrator. And it could mitigate as much as, you know, four to six damage, depending on what happens in the future. Uh, looks like he is going to go for that and going to play this Frothing Berserker. However, we do know that Tice does run Freezing Traps, so that's going to be pretty annoying for Dog to deal with going forward. Going forward, excuse me. It sure is, yeah. It, it's kind of the bane of, of their existence. But he can, I guess, here go ahead attack with the Mad Scientist, take five damage to face by attacking on the Glevesuka and having a 3-1 on board, that seems the most desired effect because you don't really care about your health because you're going to win the uh, the race. So that's, that's what Tyus goes for here. He decides to take two extra damage and give his Lepernum one extra attack. Right. I think it's worth it. Yeah, definitely. Tyus needs all the damage he can get in order to finish this game out. And... Um... I mean, really the only way that you start dying as the Hybrid Hunter in this matchup is if your board, or excuse me, your opponent fills the board with patrons, and uh, at that point you've already lost the game anyway, so Ty's going to take a chance here, he's going to take some extra damage, use his life as a resource in order to potentially get more damage onto his opponent. Dog now has picked up the second Frothing Berserker, but pretty uh, tough decision for him here because he knows that it's likely going to be Freezing Trap, so instead going to just mitigate the damage right now and take out that Leper Gnome. No question here. I mean, ooh, that's a big draw. Almost couldn't be better here. I hope he gets the uh, Misha because actually, <laughs> you and we 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 now know where your biases lie, Kaldi. Always rooting for the <laughs> EU player. Hopefully, he gets the Misha. Yeah, that's very good for Tyus to get that in this situation. Obviously, because Dog cannot deal with it. Something like Leoc, maybe he could leave on the board as well because it's not dealing that too much damage. But yeah, Dog definitely feeling the pressure here, having to deal with this Misha. It looks like it's going to be an acolyte of pain just to kind of soak up the freezing shot or the uh, the freezing trap, or soak up you know three damage and draw a card for him. Well, 
I guess I'm just all for having a more exciting series, and that will definitely come out of uh, Ty's evening this up, because Dog was looking really strong, but now it, it's it's wide open. So I'm all for, yeah, the more exciting series here by getting that Misha out. Right. Now, does Dog manage to get himself executed? Oh, wow, Ty attacks Oof. the face, Oof. not wanting to give Dog any room here whatsoever, and just going to attack face with that, realizing that if Dog wants to proc this freezing trap, he's going to give Ty an extra bow charge, so... Ty's putting on the aggression, and now he has a big decision with his Animal Companion pickup. I mean, he could weave in a Hero Power with an Animal Companion, but so hard to pass up playing a Savannah High Main on Curve. It sure is here, and he will have to give up a Bow Charge and his Leper Gnome just to challenge this, uh, this uh, <laughs> Belcher. I mean, I kind of feel like he has to, almost. He, he loses two Bow Charges, actually, to do this, because he won't get another one with the Fusion Trap procs, but... You have to keep moving when this is the scenario, but he at least does know that this is patron. It wouldn't make any sense to be running fucking berserker in control uh, warrior. But yeah, I mean, what can dog do here? He can't go really go for the low tab. He would be dead on board. Yeah, absolutely. Just dead on board. So he means he has to fit in an armor up here. There's no way to play this armor smith and allow it to gain any armor for him. So all of a sudden look all of a sudden, excuse me, looking very bad for a dog and excellent play by Tysh, just turning on the aggression. I mean, it it seems so fundamental, but for these players who are so used to playing control decks, just being able to realize when you have to turn on the gas pedal and or sorry, put your foot to the gas pedal and turn on the aggression is so crucial. And Tice recognizing exactly that a huffer would be lethal here. Does he go for does he go for the safe Lotheb? Is Lotheb even safe? I think Lotheb is probably the stronger play though. Uh, but this is so so. But huffer tough. lethal. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's tempting, and, and Ty's just get really... It's one in three, though. It is one uh, in three. But what, and... what, could, what could Dog possibly do to, right. you know, get out of this? Defender yeah. of Arcus? I don't think he's probably... Yeah, no Defender of Arcus. Yeah, Execute costs way too much. It costs six mana with this Lothab. So, yeah, with this Lothab, probably better than one in three chance of winning the game. Smart play by Ty's. Dog has nothing to do. Just going to draw cards, and that's going to be the game. Ty's, with the upset as far as decks are concerned, was really against the... In the or on the back foot as far as what decks he had brought to this particular matchup, but with excellent, excellent plays, able to take out Dog and win the series 3-2. to two. Excellently played by both players, but I'm really impressed by Ty's here. Carry through on Misha, yeah. Think about if that actually had just been a huffer. That to the fiery war axe. We wouldn't even be... Oh, the game wouldn't even be over. It would just go on. It would be wide open for Dog to come back, but his hand just didn't really work against that Misha, and... and Tice takes the series three to two. Honestly, yeah, Tice played this beautifully, but so did Dog. I don't think we can count him out. He had a stronger lineup, but just the, the draws for him just didn't really work out in this one. Uh, but yeah, so Tice is two one. Dog is one one. Still fighting. Tice is very likely to advance here, but Dog has all the potential in the world to to go through. Uh, next up here we have Kimi versus Braros. Pali, Mage, Hunter versus Warrior, Priest, Rogue. Again, six different classes here. You won't want to miss that. We'll be right back. <laughs> 